what is this disgusting stuff I am looking at here? eBay, you should be ashamed of yourselves. So, yes, it happened. These are hard to get. And people are saying, yeah, well, emulation is hard. It's not. And in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own SNES Classic with as many games as you want. This is going to be the operating system you want for your Raspberry Pi to play all those retro games. You should be able to play everything from Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast on the higher end to Commodore 64, Atari 800, uh, all those classic systems through this method. To get started, you do need to download a couple of files on your computer. So we're going to go ahead and I'll put links in the description, but uh, one of them is Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3. That's what we're going to be installing on, but if you do have a Raspberry Pi 01, you would click here. To, for the remainder of this tutorial, it's going to be for Raspberry Pi 3, but the method should be very similar. The other program you're going to want is Win32 or some sort of disk imaging uh, program that will allow you to write a .img file. Uh, once you have that all set up, you should have this little file here. Go ahead and extract it and you should get this file here, which is a .img file. Once you have the .img file, I'm now going to put the SD card in my computer. There it is. It's 8 gig. Go ahead and format this. Make sure it's on the right drive. Format. Okay. Okay. All right. It's fat. Fat32 is okay. Xfat is okay as well. So now we have. Now we need to go into our Win32. Go ahead and run an administrator. I already installed it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the here. You can download it here. I'll put a link in the description as well. It's a very small file. Once you have that, you want to make sure you have the right device again. You're going to click this folder and go to that image file. Now that I have the correct image, I'm going to go ahead and hit this right button here. It's going to say, are you sure you want to continue? I'm going to say yes. All right, now write was complete. It took about eight minutes, uh, and that was with a SanDisk 8 gigabyte card. You can use any micro SD. I do recommend using name brand like Samsung, SanDisk, and getting the higher end, the class 10. You do want a class 10. Put some links in the description for those um, so you get good ones as well. At this point, we're going to go ahead and exit the program. We're going to pull the micro SD out of our computer and we're going to stick it in our Raspberry Pi and go ahead and power and just plug in the Raspberry Pi, which should power it on. Make sure you do have either a keyboard or a controller hooked up and you do have the uh, HDMI hooked up as well. Um, the Pi does not like not having those inputs in prior to being booted up. Okay, we've made it. As you can see, it says one gamepad detected. I'm using the Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. I'll put a link in that in the description as well. And I'm just cor pressing the corresponding keys on my controller. It's very simple to do. You can use a keyboard for this as well. I highly recommend the Xbox 360 controller because it is seen easily. You don't have to worry about the right analog sticks as much. Um, because you don't really use them. And if you don't want to assign a button, you can just hold down any button to skip over. Now I hit OK. It does take a little second here. I already hit OK like about three seconds ago, as you can see, still thinking. OK, so it takes about five seconds there. And as you see, when we first boot up, we only have um, Retro Pies here. And um, what we want to do is we do want to connect to the Internet. So you do want to hook up a computer or something like that where you can type with. And uh, I mean a keyboard, not a computer. And uh, we're going to go into Wi-Fi and set up our Wi-Fi, and that way we can transfer over some games and get this started. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Just click Wi-Fi. You can also just plug your uh, computer in if you have a LAN connection, and you can skip this part as well. Just connect to Wi-Fi. It'll ask for your password, enter your password, and then hit connect. Okay, now go ahead and move to your computer. You will have to go ahead and get the ROMs. There's all sorts of places to get ROMs. I'm sure there's links in the description below to get those, to get whole packs, things like that. Once you go ahead and you have them, you can keep them as .zip files. It's totally fine. All the emulators usually run on uh, zips, but you can always double check that in uh, the RetroPie setup for specific emulators. But anyways, all we're going to do next is uh, go ahead and grab our ROMs. And then we're going to network into our Raspberry Pi by going to the Network tab on your PC. And then from your Network tab, you can access the Raspberry Pi, go into the ROMs folder, and then go into the appropriate system. 
In this particular tutorial, we're doing SNES. So you'll see here, I'm gonna go from the, um, my ROMs directory into the Pi, and I'm gonna transfer the ROMs directly from the hard drive on my computer over the network into my Raspberry Pi. It's a fairly quick process. There is a way to do it via USB stick, um, as well as a couple other ways. I'll put some links in the description on how to do that. You can hold shift and do all of them, or you can manually add one at a time. If there's certain games you don't want, just go ahead and delete them out of there. Um, and once you're done transferring, we're gonna move back to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, we're now back on the Pi, fresh install. We are connected to the Wi-Fi. That's how we got our computer to see the Pi. But as you can see here, we still only have a RetroPie logo here. So what we wanna do is we just wanna hit the start button really quick on our controller, go down to quit. Oh, don't exit, don't press the B, you wanna press A here. And then you don't need to restart the whole system, you just gotta restart emulation station super fast, that fast, that was real time. And look at that, we now have Super Nintendo on our Pi. And if you transferred all those games, all those games would be here. So let's go ahead and click in, and there you go. We have all of our games that we transferred over. You can also press start. You can go into scraper. You could scrape all your games. Uh, just one system. Let's go ahead and start. And here we go. You can choose between, there we go. Right now we're scraping the artwork. I'm just telling you that I'm okay with what it found. 90 minutes, that looks good. Like here, you know, you have multiple. Usually the first one they guess is usually right. And uh, you can just go through here and scrape all the artwork. You get the idea. Okay, great. So, as you can see, we now scraped the artwork and the information. Tells you what, how many players, like over here, we can see how many players it takes. Over there, we could see, um, you know, what year it was released, what company, and there's a little brief description. So we got the games, we scraped the artwork. So as you can see, we're in a little bit more of an advanced image here. We have the NES Classic theme. We have added the NES Classic sound. We've also added video previews. So for all of our SNES games, we now have a little video preview showing off some gameplay of the actual game. So Sailor Moon. So Super Mario RPG, one of my personal favorite games. Really beautiful, really nice stuff. Super Mario Kart, right? Not too bad. We can go to other systems like Vectrix, Virtual Boy. You have a lot more expansion you can do here. So with the music, I'll go ahead and put a link to that. It's a little bit more involved. As far as how do you change your emulation station themes to like, for example, I have the NES Classic. You just wanna be connected to the Wi-Fi as you already should be and you have all these great themes. The one you're looking for is by Ruckage. He's actually working on a brand new one for the SNES Classic, both the Famicom version and the regular US version, the UK version versus the US version. And uh, there you go, update or uninstall Ruckage NES Mini. Then you have the Famicom Mini. So same thing, he's gonna have the SNES Mini and the, Famic and the, and the Super Famicom Mini. Those will be available within, I would imagine, days, weeks at the latest. Um, you just go ahead and install those. It installs over the Wi-Fi, and then you hit Start here, and you go to UI Settings, and you can change all your themes. So we're running the NES Mini theme. When you launch a game, the music automatically dims. As you can see, you can also set bezels. You can also see here that I'm running a CRT-style shader. And uh, I just want to show you that you can totally change that. You just want to go select an X to go to RetroArc, go to your quick menu, go over down to shaders, and you can see I'm running the CRT Pi right now. You can go ahead, go here, go to your shaders directory. Look at all these different shaders I could start, I can change. Way more changeability, flexibility. SNES hires building. Let's try that. So let me go apply changes. You can see in the background it's going to change a little bit. Go back and resume. 
And as you can see, I changed the shaders again. Really easy stuff that emulation gets you. You can also do cheat codes, you could save your states, you could do the rewind just like you can. You know, all the things that the NES, SNES Classic is like touting, like, oh, we could do this, we could do that. The Raspberry Pi has been able to do this the whole time. This is nothing new. So know that you're in good hands here. You're in very good hands. All right, let's see how we do here. What do you guys think? It's usually the gray car who uh, cheats. We'll see who cheats this time around. Got some cash. I feel pretty good about that. Like, what did I say? The gray car. I'm telling you, this gray car is always in the way. So back to what you saw in the beginning of this video. Isn't that crazy? I mean, the whole idea of the of Nintendo making the SNES Classic is to share these classic games with friends and families. How are families going to wait in line for three hours to get a system? Like. Oh, I missed that. Oh, that was a pretty good transition. Yeah, you better watch out, Gray. I'm coming for you. So this gives you that opportunity to still enjoy these classic systems that we all grew up with, and you can still share them. So you just hit Start Select to get out, whatever your hotkey is. And as you can see, we're back into the main menu. And there you go. Super Punch-Out. All the same Super NES games are in here. You want to add, remove some you can. You want to have your own SNES Classic with only 21 games, exactly like the original system. You can do that. You want to put Star Fox 2 on here. That's easily done. All of that is at your fingertips. For the hardware sides of things, I do recommend getting this Raspberry Pi kit here. I think the 32 gigabyte Class 10 SanDisk Ultra is the perfect card. You'll not only be able to do SNES, but NES, Sega, all that stuff's gonna fit on there just fine. It gives you the HDMI, the power adapter, everything you need. If you wanna buy a la carte, I'll also put some links in the description below. The case I recommend is either, if you wanna go on the cheap, just use the little black case it comes with. Otherwise, this is the best SNES case made to date for the Raspberry Pi, and it is very nice, very clean, I have done a review on it. I love it, love it, love it. It comes with a fan. It's one of the best SNES cases out right now for the Pi. As far as controllers go, let's start with the best first. 8 bit makes a really cool wireless one. I've heard only great things about it. My use of it, it's been great. It's Bluetooth, so you can use it not only in this, but on the Switch or any other console or PC um, that'll uh, handle the Bluetooth. Great controller. Um, this next one is probably the best wired choice, the iBuffalo. Um, it's kind of the golden standard, if you will, and the price fluctuates a lot. Um, but it's an overall really good controller and it does have turbo buttons, which is a nice little bonus. And then lastly on the cheap end um, is these iNex controllers. I mean, they're totally decent. They're not as good as the iBuffalo. The cord isn't as long. Um, the D-pad is maybe like 10%. To 20% not as good as the iBuffalo, but everything else about it is very similar. It doesn't have the turbo buttons, but you get two for $13, so it's a significant saving. So if you want to go on the chip cheap, I'd get these. I hope you enjoyed this one. As you see, it's not that hard. It's quite easy, and it's fun to learn. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.